Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 2 under the topic state space analysis. So here the problem is obtain the state model of the electrical network as shown in figure by choosing V1 of t and V2 of t as state variables. So this is our given circuit diagram. So in this circuit diagram we are having how many energy storage elements? We are having two energy storage elements, right? So this capacitor and again this capacitor. And here the output voltage will be founded across the two resistors. This resistor R and this resistor R, right? So as we all know, node is nothing but interconnection of two or more elements okay it is a point or a junction where two or more elements will be interconnected so here this is a one node and this forms the other node right so here in the problem v1 of t and v2 of t should be considered as state variables right they had already mentioned <coughs> so here i have taken this point as v1 of t and this point as v2 of t right now we are proceeding with the solution so here and again this is your voltage source v of t right and here just i'm completing the circuit by drawing a voltage source here right so this is v of t and the rest of the things remains the same and in the next step we are converting voltage source in series with the resistor to a current source parallel with the resistor right here you see voltage source is in series with the resistor right what is meant by series connection the finishing point of one end forms the starting point of other end you see here voltage source gets over here this is the starting point of this voltage source and this is the ending point of this voltage source right but to the ending point of this voltage source i am having a resistor starting point right or in other words the current flowing through this path remains the same in series connection for example, if you have a current of 10 amps flowing over here, again the same 10 amps will flow through this resistor also. Do you agree? So, here these two elements are in series. Now, we are going to change this as this voltage source as current source and this resistor will be in parallel with the current source. Right. So, here you see this voltage source had become current source. So, we know the formula right as per ohm's law i is equal to v by r so here v by r denotes it is a current and next this resistor in series become resistors in parallel how you differentiate elements in parallel here the starting and ending point of the elements will be what to say same you see here this is the starting point of this current that is v of t by r and again this is the starting point of this resistor also right so this is a parallel connection. Now we are going to apply Kitchoff's current law. So at node 1 we are applying Kitchoff's current law. See this is our node 1. So only we have mentioned as V1 of T. So how many elements are connected to this point? To this point we are having two elements which are connected. Right. One is R and another one is C. So as per Kitchoff's current law what is the law? The sum of current flowing towards the junction is equal to sum of current flowing away from the junction, right? So, just consider this diagram. This is our V1 of T. So, at this node, we are having two currents and those two currents are moving away, right? So, current flowing through the capacitor is given by C into dV1 by dt. And again, current flowing through this resistor is given by V1 minus V2 by R, right? So, when you consider this node 1, we are writing two expressions, right? So, here you see this resistor is connected between this V1 and V2. Do you agree? You see, when you look at this diagram, this resistor is connected between these two voltage sources. So, while writing expression, since we are considering our node 1, this V1 should be written first. So, V1 minus V2 divided by R since R is connected between this V1 and V2. 
right and again current flowing through the capacitor is c into dv1 by dt because this capacitor is connected only with this v1 not with any other voltage source so here we are writing a simple expression like this right now we are going to consider the state variables since here in the problem v1 of t and v2 of t should be taken as state variables right so here v1 is replaced as x1 and v2 is replaced by x2 right so again v of t is nothing but this is your input voltage source right so this input voltage source in the form of state variables it is represented as u so here we are considering v of t is equal to u which is nothing but the input right so here now we are going to rewrite this expression in terms of this x1 x2 right so when you replace what happens v1 becomes x1 and v2 becomes x2 so x1 minus x2 by r plus c into dx1 by dt so here comes the expression right now this dx1 by dt can be rewritten as x1 dot right now we are going to find an expression for x1 dot so i am moving this part to the right hand side so when i move this to the right hand side this entire the, this entire expression is in positive sign right when i move to the right hand side that comes with a negative sign here so the next thing is again i am moving this minus sign inside the bracket so here minus x1 by r plus x2 by r i want only x1 dot so i am moving this c to the right hand side so here c is in numerator multiplication therefore it moves it comes here in the denominator part right so this is our final expression for x1 dot right so at node 2 now we are going to apply kcl so you see this is our node 2 right so to this node 2 totally we are having four elements right one two three and four elements are connected now we are going to frame expression for this so again you see when you consider this resistor again this resistor is common for v2 and v1 so while writing expression v2 minus v1 by r here right plus here this resistor is connected only to v2 so v2 by r right and again current flowing through this capacitor is c into dv2 by dt right and finally this is equal to v of t by r so actually again consider this node from this node we are having three elements which are connected and again the current flowing through these elements are moving away from the node right here it is moving away and here also again it is moving and here also again it is moving away right here you may have a doubt right here also there is an interconnection of two elements and why we are not considering this point as another node right here the thing is you can write v2 of t here as well as you can write v2 of t here also because they are at the same potential they are at the same voltage level right so that's the reason here we are not declaring any other new nodes here and again you see to this junction this is the current which flow towards the junction and here the current flowing through these elements are moving away from the junction can you can you make a note of it yes that's the reason here you see this is the current flowing towards the junction and these are the currents which are flowing away from the junction so that is the reason current flowing away from the junction or written on left hand side or right hand side whatever maybe you can write wherever you want so these are written together at a side and this is written individually on the other side right and again the same case we have to replace v1 and v2 by x1 and x2 so when you rewrite we are having an expression like this again the next step is this differentiated form is written as x2 dot here again we have to frame an expression for x2 dot that's it so as we need expression for this x2 dot i am moving these two terms to the right hand side right here these two terms are with the positive sign when you move to the right hand side they acquire negative sign here again i am moving this negative sign inside this 
bracket so i am having an expression like this finally i want only expression for x2 dot so i am moving this c to the right hand side again c here is in numerator when you move here it occupies the denominator position right that's it now we had framed expressions for x1 dot and x2 dot so these two are the expressions right when you rewrite these expressions in matrix form you see this is the basic uh, standard format to write oh, okay so here in the left hand side x1 dot x2 dot so they form a column matrix and again here you see what are all the things we are having x1 x2 right so this x1 x2 forms a column matrix over here and coefficient of x1 written here coefficient of x2 is written here and again coefficient of x1 coefficient of x2 respectively in these places right and apart from that here you see we are having u by rc so again this u forms another individual matrix and here the coefficient of u is 1 by rc and in the first expression there is no u term so here it is 0 1 by rc right since we have no u term here it is 0 and here it is 1 by rc right so this is known as state equation right then the next thing is we are framing an expression for output so here the output is again we have to look back at the circuit diagram you see from the circuit diagram this is your input voltage right then what will be your respective output voltage so the voltage across the capacitor is the output voltage and here the voltage across the capacitor is nothing but it is v1 of t right because this this occupies the final part here so output is written as v1 of t and this v1 is nothing but this is equal to x1 right so while writing expression for output you see here only we are having x1 but we are having two variables right so x1 x2 forms a column matrix and here the coefficient of x1 is 1 there is no x2 so it is 0 and this forms the output equation right and finally these two matrices contribute the state model of the system right so here comes the end of the problem hope you people understand if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you